Hello and welcome to Excel-BoardTemplates.com. My name is Steve True. Please visit our blog at Excel-BoardTemplates.com so that you're sure to get the latest charting techniques, Excel tips and tricks, and fun things to do in Excel. Alright, uh, today I wanted to uh, show you how to do what I call a horizontal panel chart. Over here on the right you can see a chart that I took a horrible photo of with my cell phone. Uh, to post on the blog and this was such a great rendition and had so many cool techniques I wanted to show you how to do it. This was originally from the Wall Street Journal. It was a posting showing uh, Dropbox users versus YouSendIt and Box.com. Uh, you can see uh, this horizontal panel chart really has uh, it's got some broken areas where it's got Dropbox, YouSendIt and uh, Box.com with some blank space. Each series has its own color it does not show the uh, horizontal categories across the entire area. Um, you can see they're blank um, for the other ones representing 2010, 11, and 12. Uh, they have 100 million um, as a vertical uh, marker, and uh, you've also got uh, uh, the million is not repeated along here. We've also got uh, categories up on a, another axis up here uh, representing each group. So. Uh, and we've also got a title that I just showed you in the last posting, so you should go there and see how to do the title uh, for this chart in uh, two different font sizes and one bold and one not bold. So Here's my chart. Uh, as you can see, this is all done in Excel. It's just an Excel chart. Uh, none of this is done with shapes or anything else. Uh, the only thing I really did was I moved the locked up from the center over to the left just a little. So. Uh, but uh, all of these are representing the Excel chart, and as you can see, uh, this is what I call a horizontal uh, panel chart, and uh, represents the other one uh, pretty well, I might say. So let's see how we go about doing that in Excel. Okay, so I have my data set up right here. I've got it set up through uh, from B3 down to G13. You want to set up your data in the same way, and let's talk a little bit about each one of these data points. Uh, this column right here is going to be a series that represents the um, categories on the secondary horizontal axis. These ones are going to be our categories for the uh, primary horizontal axis. This is going to be ultimately be our data. These, this first data here is going to represent the Dropbox totals and will be in red. This data right here will be the you send it uh, series and will be in uh, shades of blue. This is the series for the box.com. And then I use this series over here to create the horizontal breaks in our grid lines. All right, let me show you how I go about doing this. Uh, normally, I would highlight this range here and create my chart using this. But when you have numbers uh, represented in uh, Excel and you start your chart with those, it thinks those are actually a series and not categories. So I'm going to move one space over and go from D3 down to G13. I'm going to go up to my insert ribbon. I'm going to go to the column chart. I'm going to do a 2D clustered column chart. And there we have it. So let me move this down uh, near the other one so that you can see both of them side by side and how we go about recreating it. Okay, so um, looks kind of similar. Um, we've got this extra legend in here. I'm going to leave it for right now so that uh, you can see some of the other things. So we have to do a number of things. First thing we need to do is let's add our horizontal category labels uh, down here on the horizontal axis. How we go about doing that is we go up to our, once we click on the chart, go up to our design ribbon. We are going to do the select data button in our data grouping. And that will bring up the select data source dialog box. Now, uh, just select the first series here, and then over on the right, we've got horizontal category access labels. Hit the edit button. It's going to bring up a dialog box to show us the range for the X access labels. I'm going to highlight cell C3 through C13 and click on OK. Let's click on OK and look at it. Uh, it has down here at the bottom of the chart, it has created 2010, 11, and 12. Uh, and it does not show anything else for the rest of the labels since they are just would be repeated as 2010, 11, and 12. 
Um, now I want, let's uh, make these columns a little wider to look like our sample, which are pretty wide. So uh, you want to right click on any one of the data series, do format data series, we bring that dialog box over here. And what we want to do is we want to change this overlap to about, oh, 80%. And then I like to do no gap in between there. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. Uh, pretty wide, looks pretty good right now. Getting a lot closer to what we want to do. Uh, let's go ahead and color these in as well. Now, um, we've got this set up as one complete series for each one of these, but we want them, here's our sample chart, to be red going down progressively, and then blue for the other two, going from darker to lighter. So how you do that is you want to select the series, and you can see up here it has actually selected our D series um, in column D, but then if you right click on any one of those data points again, you see it's only highlighted this individual data point, and the other data points are not selected at all. Now if I right click on that, you see my dialog box pop-up menu here it says Format Data Point going to click on format data point uh, and what we want to do is we want to change the fill of this to be a solid fill and I want to pick the color I want to actually pick uh, we'll do this blue accent dark darker by 25 percent number one and I'm just going to keep this dialog box open I'm going to go in and select the next data point go up to fill solid fill it's going to fill it in with the same color but I want to go one shade lighter to 40 percent and then I'm going to pick the last one in that series to fill, solid fill, and we will go up to 60% uh, lighter. So you can see the progression of darker to lighter. Uh, let's go ahead and do the same thing for the next one. Um, oops, I guess I was supposed to do these in red to make it look like mine. So let's go ahead and change that real quick. Bear with me. Uh, we wanted to do this red choice here. We wanted to go up and do a solid fill of the second one and uh, pick the wrong colors to make it look like the chart that we already had. Okay, so let's go to the next one, and these are the ones we wanted to make blue. I double click on the data point to make sure I get the actual data point itself. I'm going to come in and do the blue, uh, fill, solid fill, do one shade lighter, and notice it says data point up here at the very top, solid fill, so I know I'm doing the right thing. There's that one, let me move off to the side a little bit. This data point here is going to be the same color, so when I hit solid fill, it'll fill it in correctly. The middle one is one shade darker than that one. Pretty sure it's that one. And then here's the final data point, solid fill, and make it a little darker. Okay, let's take a look at it. Our chart's getting pretty close there. Um, uh, we, we're getting very close. Um, on our sample chart, we have 100 million down to zero. And the way we're doing this is uh, we're doing this with a custom number format. So we're going to highlight this vertical axis, the primary one, right click on it and do format axis. This is going to bring up our format access dialog box. We want to make the minimum zero. I always like to do that in some cases when I'm modifying these. Uh, the maximum, we actually want to make this just slightly larger. Uh, than 100 million. So that would be uh, 100, and I'm going to put a 5 in there. 100 million is that. You could also type in the entire uh, 100 million. Oops, I did that wrong. Ah, there we go. You'll see over here on the uh, left hand side of my chart, I'm now at 100 million. Uh, and then we want to make this one uh, increments of 25 million. Uh, so we want to do. Too far. Let's see if we get there. So uh, you will now see on the vertical axis we have 100 million going down in increments for our major unit of 25 million each. Uh, and I also I want to take care of the line that we've got here going with this vertical axis. I'm going to change the major tick type to none, and we are going to leave the access labels. And then here's how we change the number. You can take a look at this on my blog as well to see how to do it. I've already got this custom norm number format set up, so you'll see in my chart over here it does it, 100 million, 75, 50, 25. What it is doing is, let's take a look at this format code. I am saying for this number, if it's greater than 100 million, I want you to do the number um, that it is represented, and I want you to subtract two commas in there, uh, and then I'm going to put text of a space and a million. If it is not over 100 million, 
just put in the number and take away uh, all zeros uh, after the two commas. So click on close and uh, take a look at our chart. Uh, it's coming along pretty good. I forgot to get rid of this vertical line so I can right click on the axis, do format axis again. Let's go to line color and we want to do no line. Okay, let's take a look. So uh, starting to look pretty similar. Um, now what I want to do is we need to create our breaks or our horizontal breaks so that these grid lines um, are going to disappear. Before we do that, let's modify these grid lines by clicking on them with left click, right clicking to format axis. We're going to go up and do a line style. And for this line style, oops, I don't want to do format axis. I want to do the format grid lines. Right click on it. Format grid lines is what I meant to choose. Here we're going to choose a different line style and we're going to be by choosing a different dash type of dash. And uh, let's close that. You can now see the dashes are showing up, but there's no breaks in here. Um, oh, I'm also noticing down here I have not fixed the horizontal line on the axis. So let me right click on the horizontal axis, click Format Axis. Let's do um, Axis here. It says Major Tick Types. We're going to do None. And access labels, we're going to leave those alone. And then a line color, we want to do no line on our horizontal axis. All right, so now we're getting really close. Um, what we want to do is remember there was this fourth series over here of all zeros, or spelled blanks and then zeros. That series is numbers four. Series four you see here in our legend, it's purple. Since they're all zero, they're not showing up in our chart. What we want to do is we want to now show those on the chart by moving those to the secondary axis. So select your chart. Let's go up to your layout ribbon. From the layout ribbon, we want to go over here to the chart elements uh, pick list, and we want to find series four. Once we find series four, there's a button there that says format selection. If we click on that, um, our dialog box opens up, and what we want to do is we want to change this to the secondary axis uh, and we also want to change the fill color here we want to do a solid fill on this and we also we don't want to we want to hide those grid lines so how we're going to do that is we're going to fool Excel by giving it a white color as our solid fill now you don't see this uh, series because it's coming down from the top and it is zero in height uh, but it's not showing up because we haven't added that secondary horizontal category so what you want to do is click in your chart, go up to the axes uh, uh, buttons, and you want to do secondary horizontal axis because this is where we're going to actually get that series to show up uh, coming from the top down. And so now you see here's those series right there. So this series is now highlighted here. You're seeing those columns breaking up the grid lines that we were seeing before. They're now looking like they're uh, they've been deleted or erased. Uh, and then we can uh, modify these just a little bit more. So um, that's uh, so it's coming down from the top. Since it's zero high, it's going all the way down to zero. So what we want to do is we now want to get rid of this right-hand vertical axis, which is our secondary vertical axis, by right-clicking on it, doing Format Axis. We don't want to delete it. We just want to get rid of it so it's not being visible. So we want to get rid of any tick marks by going None, and we want to say Access Labels, None as well. Okay, let's close that one down. Uh, getting real close. Oops, I forgot to uh, get rid of the lines. Let's right click on it. Format axis, line color, no line. Uh, now that secondary axis is completely gone. We still have to deal with our uh, secondary horizontal axis. Um, notice it's got the same category labels as our primary one. And what we want to do over here in our sample is go Dropbox, you send it, and box.com. How we're going to do that is click in your chart, go up to your design ribbon. In the design ribbon, you have a button called Select Data. Now, here's the important part. Um, it looks like these are all the same. Notice here, Series 1, 2, 3, and 4. However, Series 4 is actually on the secondary horizontal axis. So it has completely different horizontal category axis labels. So you first have to select Series 4, Come over and edit those labels. And here's where we want to move it from C13. We actually want to go B3 to B13. If we click on OK and then OK, look at that. There's our 
labels now. So, uh, and then what we can do is just format this a little bit more by going Format Axis. We want to get rid of the tick marks, and we want to change the line color to no line color. We also want to go up to our home ribbon and make them bold. Oh, and let's center them a little bit. Oops, there we go. Uh, left hand adjustment uh, by hitting left, it aligns those to the left hand edge. So we are pretty much set here. We need to get rid of this legend. So let's click on the legend and hit your delete key. We can also add a title in here by going up to your layout ribbon, chart title above the chart. We're going to make that equal to cell A1. And I'm going to come in here and highlight this uh, area and do unbold. And I'm going to shrink it down to about a, I don't know, 12 point font, left hand and then we are going to move it. You can look at that at the previous posting that I did yesterday. So there we have it. Uh, we have replicated this chart. It is a horizontal panel chart uh, that um, you can do. It's got two different category labels on it for the axes, the horizontal axes. Uh, it's got special number formatting. I've got different posts on all of these on my blog, so make sure you do that. Uh, once again, this is Steve. If that helped, please leave me some comments and let me know if you liked that video. Uh, and also visit and sign up for my blog at excel-boardtemplates.com so that you're sure to get the latest charting techniques, tools, tips, and tricks. Thank you.